Hi, I'm William Lasseter, and I'll be taking you through an examination of several sonnets. To think about the sonnet for just a minute, it is a specific type of poetry, a 14-line poem, has variable rhyme scheme, it originated originally in Italy with uh, artists such as Petrarch and also Dante Alighieri, and it was brought eventually to England by Sir Thomas Wyatt and Henry Howard, the Earl of Surrey. That was roughly around the 16th century. The, the name sonnet literally means a little song, and it traditionally reflected upon a single sentiment, a single idea, with uh, a turn of thought somewhere in the body of the sonnet. The sonnet dealt, though, with very uh, weighty, deep ideas, deep thoughts. It was, a, it was a rhyme scheme, a poetic scheme that was designed in order to contemplate more serious subject matter. Primarily, it was designed to contemplate the idea of love, and love being a serious subject, it turned to other subjects according to the authors. The way that a sonnet normally works, too, was a specific way of juxtaposing two apparently contradictory positions or ideas. And the two contradictory positions or ideas are brought together in a single poem to see how they meet, how they contrast, and how they eventually end up with an answer to a serious problem. The sonnet is normally consisting of iambic pentameter. To explain that for a minute, iams are a foot of poetry that consists of two syllables organized in a pattern that is unstressed and then stressed, so ba-dump. So a series of iams would be ba-dump, 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 with unstressed and stressed syllables. Pentameter, from the Greek word for five, is simply the number of feet in a single line of poetry. So pentameter is five feet. So you have iambic pentameter is ba-dump, 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 ba-dump. Most all sonnets are written in iambic pentameter, and they normally have two quatrains, that is, two four-line sections, and then either they'll have uh, two tercets, that is, two three-line sections, or they'll have another quatrain and finish with a couplet. A couplet is where you have two lines that are rhymed together. Sometimes that couplet can be a heroic couplet. A heroic couplet is a two-line rhyming stanza written in iambic pentameter where each line always has a masculine ending. That is, it ends on a stressed syllable. Using the variation on iambic structure allows you to end on an unstressed syllable. It's not an option in a heroic couplet. A heroic couplet always ends with a stressed syllable. So the structure of the sonnet is either it is quatrain, quatrain, tercet, or it's quatrain, 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 couplet, sometimes heroic couplet. And somewhere in there is a turn of thought called a volta. The volta in the sonnet is that point in that work where the, the direction turns, the idea changes or alters. Either a new uh, piece or a new element or a new uh, comparison is brought in, or else the comparison that had previously been introduced is now changed or altered. That shift in thought is where the poem basically brings up the question and then begins to answer that question. Consequently, the sonnet normally follows an intellectual pattern that is pretty regular. In the first quatrain, you have the idea being introduced, the problem being introduced. In the second quatrain, you have the idea is complicated, that is, it's, uh, it's made a little bit more complex. Then you have, after the second quatrain, a volta, a turn of thought. And the idea then is made even more difficult. And in the last part, which is the couplet, it's resolved to some degree. Or if you have a tercet, there's no resolution, it's simply that the idea is worked out to its natural conclusion. Each little sonnet then ends up being a small idea, reflection, a little world in and of itself, wherein a serious idea, something like love, death, war, is contemplated. And it's contemplated in such a way that by the end of the sonnet, we're left pondering that idea ourselves. So without further ado, we're going to look first at the original types of sonnets called Petrarchan sonnets, or also known as Italian sonnets, made famous by that great poet Petrarch. 